We're going to take a look at first order differential equations. In particular, we're going to take a look at several examples for simple circuit applications. So here we're going to draw a circ simple circuit where we have a voltage source Vs. We're connected in series with an inductor as well as a resistor. So here's we have an inductor. We'll have a value of 0 0.1 Henry's and a resistor of 50 ohms. Okay, and we have a VS voltage source of 30 volts. Okay, now we're going to analyze this and see if we can generate a first order differential equation. So we can apply Kirchhoff voltage law and we can assign our polarities right here, well assign a current here, I, which is the same current going through the inductor L and the resistor R. With that direction, this will have a polarity of plus and minus, and the current right here through the resistor will have a plus and minus. And by convention, the short line for a voltage source is a minus polarity, and the longer line is a positive polarity. So if we start here, we can see that Vs is a voltage rise, and then we have voltage drop across the inductor and across the resistor. So here, using KVL, which says the sum of the voltage rise is equal to the sum of the voltage drops. Okay, so here on the left side, we have a voltage source, Vs, and we have a voltage drop across the inductor and a voltage drop across the resistor. Now we apply our relationships here. We know that the voltage across the inductor is L di dt. That's our voltage to current relationships. And for the resistor, it's simply Ohm's law in which we have VR is equal to IR. And I'll just put RI. Okay, so what we have here is in essence a first order differential equation. We can put it in standard form where we isolate the highest derivative, in this case, derivative of 1 by itself. So that implies that we have R divided by Li is equal to Vs divided by L where we took this equation, rearranged it, and divide L on both sides of this equation. Now we recognize this is part of our integration factor we'll call P. Okay, And so our integration factor integration factor is the inter exponential raised to P d t in this case which is equal to e to the integral of r l dt or e to the r over l times t. That's our integration factor. Okay. So our solution is then so our integration factor for the left side e to the r L times t, and we take the derivative with respect to time with a quantity where our independent, our dependent variable is i, which is equal to v s over l times e to the r l times t. Integrate both sides of this equation with respect to dt, we have on the right side just what's inside the brackets e over r l t times i is equal to v s over l l over r 
e to the r l over t, a result of our integration plus our integration constant c. Now we want to isolate our dependent variable i, our current, our series current, and we have here L's cancel right here. We have here Vs over R E to the R divided by LT E to the minus R L times T. So we're, minus, we're multiplying E to the minus R LT on both sides plus C E to the minus R L T. Okay, let me scroll this down. Now, we have I, this simplifies to Vs over R plus C e to the minus R L and T. So that's our general solution with an arbitrary constant C shown here as a result of this integration and suppose our initial current going through that resistor and inductor is zero at time t equals zero so we can calculate our constant c because wherever there's a s we'll apply t equals zero so that's plus c e to the minus r l times zero or v s over r plus c equals zero since we are uh, will be given that the current through that inductor and resistor is zero so that leaves c equals to v s divided by r hence our solution to this equation i is a function of time is v s over R, our constant is C is V S over R also, but it's a, with a negative. Okay, so that's a negative V S over R E to the minus R L over T. We can simplify this by factoring out the V S over R. That leaves one minus E to the minus R L T. All right, so when t equals zero this expression here is equal to zero and when t is a very large number as it approaches infinity this approaches the steady state current of vs divided by r in other words after a long period of time which is five time constants and a time constant in this case we defined here for this circuit as l over r so after five time constants of L over R, this approaches the steady state current of Vs over R, which in essence says that the inductor is just not there. We just have basically a circuit after a steady state of with a resistor and no inductor. In other words, we got rid of the inductor right here. Okay? And that acts like a short after a certain amount of time which is about five time constants. And that concludes this first example of how we use can get a differential equation using the IV relationships of various components to form a differential equations for this particular circuit. Note this equation here we can just substitute the values that we calculated earlier, but basically this is our general solution and we can apply the appropriate value for Vs, which is 30 volts, R, which is 50 ohms, and L, is, which is 0.1 henrys. But the point in here is that these RL uh, components can be used to develop timing circuitry because of this uh, time constant formulation given as L over R. So R and L can be added to say some external uh, as external components to a circuit to form some timing uh, functions uh, within a particular application.